So if we have ADD, we have kids with ADD, we think we need to breathe a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Take some time to breathe. We're always on the go, 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 right? All right, so here's my beautiful family. And, you know, you heard my story about me being 10 years old, riding my bike, and head trauma. Boom, head trauma. Uh, and from that day forward, I couldn't breathe, living on breathing machines morning and night, living on steroids. And like you heard Kelsey's story about having seizures, then I started having seizures. That was with all the medication was on. I was on medication for 11 years. Sixth grade, I missed 52 days of school because I was so sick. My parents didn't know what to do with me. Um, so they decided to put me basically in the bubble, like a plastic bubble, because every time I go outside, I've had severe asthma attack, and they'd have to run me to the hospital, and I'd get hooked up, and then I'd stay there for a week or so. Um, so what they did with me, they never really ran food allergies, which I thought was really interesting back then. Uh, but they did run, I was allergic to everything outside in the environment. So my parents thought the best thing to do was to rip down the carpet, to put plastic all in my room, and to live that way, right? Well, over the years, I kept getting sicker and sicker. Um, and they did the allergy shots. I did the allergy shots twice a week, and I did that for a good 10 years, and I kept getting sicker and sicker. So my immune system kept going down the hill, and my wonderful uncle saves the day. Amazon John, he's a married to Olivia Newton John, which I love him. And he would come in town from literally Amazon, and he would bring in herbs, okay? And he has a really neat story about how his healing started taking about. So he would bring me eucalyptus and different herbs, and I would breathe in these herbs, and they would make me feel better with my breathing instead of this nasty breathing machine that I had to do morning and night. It was horrible. And I knew from then that he had something. He had something kind of going with this cool thing. And he was all into healthy, natural healing. My parents were, well, my mom's grandfather was a medical doctor. So we were raised, if we had a problem, we would go and get our drugs. We'd go to our medicine cabinet. We got a problem, here's your medicine, here's your medicine. Here. And that's the way they were raised, and that's the way they raised our, you know, me, my family. Uh, so, when I met my uncle, he was just always interesting. You know, here's this cool dude, like not into drugs, into natural healing, and he's, like I said, he's got a neat story, I won't go into his story. So he got in a really bad car accident. He was going to see Olivia and got in a really bad car accident and fractured three of his vertebrae, compression fracture. And I went to go visit him in Florida, and I was 15 at the time, and he asked me, he wasn't gonna do any drugs, he asked me to put some herbs on his back and start working on his back to help him. So I don't know what I'm doing. I'm 15 years old, but I just I knew. I think internally we know what we want to do, and I always had a desire to be a doctor. I wanted to be a pediatrician. Actually, that was my dream to be a pediatrician. But the pediatrician I saw did not get me better, right? So I was like, I hated to go to see my pediatrician. I hated to get the drugs. I hated to get the shots every week. So I was like, I want to help people, but I don't want to do that. So I worked on him, and he felt better. And he said, you've got healing hands, you should be a chiropractor. He knew what a chiropractor was, he was already seeing one, he was already in a natural healing. I said, what in the world is a chiropractor? Uh, when I told my grandmother, she was like, uh, what? You're not gonna be a real doctor? You know, one of those things. So I was like, oh, right, this sounds great. That was a good conversation with my grandmother. She was not too excited about me being a chiropractor. Um, so yeah, I went into chiropractic philosophy, like Marie said, for the basically on the philosophy at all. I knew something was wrong with my body. I wanted to get my body back to working properly. How in the world can I get this? And it all came back to me when you're in chiropractic school, they relate everything to traumas. And I said, well, gosh, I was fine till that bike accident. And after that bike accident, my health just started going downhill. Hmm. And it's something related to me. Wow, something's going on. So um, I went to chiropractic school. I found um, a good friend of mine, which he wasn't a friend at the time, but became one of my best friends, still a best friend of mine in Pennsylvania. And he said, you need to do upper cervical. And I'm like, what's upper cervical? I had no clue what upper cervical is. You know, I just got in this chiropractic thing. I don't even know what that is, really. Um, and cervical means neck, and it's the upper, the first two upper bones and into the skull. And I said, okay, well, I don't know much about it, but let's go ahead and, and try that. And for the first time, like Marie said, I got, an, uh, got Dr. Anderson, which is in my book, I got the first upper cervical adjustment done right, and I could breathe for the first time in like 11 years since my accident. Wow. And so half of my office is designed for you to rest, and that's a very important part of your healing. So after that correction, immediately I was like, oh my 
my gosh, what did he just do to me? I want to learn what you just did to me because I was freaking awesome. It's kind of one of those things, right? So that kind of led me. I don't need to learn any other chiropractic. I want to learn upper cervical. I want to know why this works. And so now it makes sense knowing the anatomy of the spine and the brain stem and the vagus nerve, which controls breathing, is right here. You breathe right here. How is that possible, right? There's actually a vagus nerve that goes from the brain to the lungs right here. And he opened that up in that media that, and that nerve was able to do what it was be able to do, what it was designed to do. I was breathing fine before the bad guy accident, right? So my, what, what's why, why, right? I mean, I've been here for 13 years working on people. Um, I love, my, my passion is, my heart's desire is to, I love kids. Obviously, I see all kind of ages. But because my heart's at kids, it's because I was a sick kid. And I can relate and how terrible it is taking drugs and what it feels like when you're on stimulants. It feels like crap when you're on. So, Noah. Um, so I decided to have kids at home. A home birth. Another crazy, my husband's like, you're going to tell them that story. I'm like, yes. They need to know the whole story. So I hated the hospital and I did not want to have children at the hospital because I hated the hospital. Yeah. So, yeah. So Noah was my first one. So Noah, I decided to have a home. Yes, I lived um, a very small apartment in Georgia. I was going to school, and had a midwife. Obviously, had a midwife, but I had him home. Very natural, natural childbirth, easy child. He's going to turn 15 next week. He is my really easy kid. Okay. So we, or I'm relating to you guys with ADD. I promise I will get there. Okay, so my son was just like easy, go easy, and I was like, me and Scott are like the best parents ever. I mean, why are parents complaining? Because Noah is like, Noah, go do that. Oh, okay, mommy. I mean, he was just like one of those kids, right? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to have 20 because they're just so easy to have. So, you know, God likes to throw curveballs in our life, right? And I, and I was like, now I think it's time to have another kid. Let's have another kid. So we had Cora, which is my middle one right here, and she wanted to give her testimony tonight, um, so I don't know if she's going to make it or not. But okay, so why am I focusing on ADD, and why am I focusing on neurofeedback, and what am I doing? I'm actually changing my whole kind of office. It's because your middle child right here. <laughs> All right, so I had her. Everything seemed fine, and she was about... I, and I know development stuff because, you know, we learn all that in school. And, and she was about probably about six months. And I was like, something's not quite right here. Okay, I've had her at home. She's had upper cervical care. She hasn't been vaccinated. Like, I, I was like, but what's going on? Something is going on with this child. Now, at this time in my life, she's 10 now, I didn't know about the effects of food as much. In fact, I was 60 pounds heavier than I am now. So I have lost 60 pounds since doing all this. So yeah, so Cora, about six months old, you could tell there was just some developmental stuff going on, like couldn't speak well, speech issues were kind of showing up. And so nine months to a year, I'm like, I think we should start working on speech therapy. So I had her go, at age actually one and a half, I was like, I think we should start doing some speech therapy. So we paid and had her go through speech, th th speech therapy. And well, she's still in speech therapy, but goodness gracious, she's so much better just because of, again, the neurofeedback, which we're going to go into in just a minute. So anyway, um, she, if I took her to a, get her checked by a medical doctor, they would diagnose her with ADHD. Um, in fact, when she went into kindergarten, they wanted to hold her back in kindergarten. Um, but I said, no, I'd rather hold her back in like first grade. I'd rather hear cut. So we had therapies and I was working with her. I knew nothing about neurofeedback. Um, the only thing I knew about neurofeedback, there was a doctor that mentioned it um, while I was in chiropractic school and I knew a little bit about it. And so again, my friend Steve, Dr. Steve, which he runs the show here pretty much, um, he, we were visiting last summer and I just kind of had it. Uh, they were gonna, she, she just got held back. She wasn't reading. So now she's nine years old and not reading. Um, and I felt like I was doing everything that I knew possibly to do with therapies. And believe me, I've been there, done that. I just didn't want to drug her. And that's really what, and I don't know how they would have, they would have drugged her to help her ADHD, but it wouldn't have helped her read, you know? Uh, they did label us having dyslexia. And so I was like, but she was really gifted in art. So everything, she loves comic books. Um, so everything was art. In fact, that's where she's at now. She's at art class. 
And so she is amazingly, and I mean, she can draw beautiful pictures because she cannot write words. Words and numbers are a freaking disaster in her head, you know? So she would draw beautiful pictures for me. Um, and I, I was just like, well, she's just a different kid. You know, I really didn't know how to explain it. Her brain works differently. I just thought that's just the way it's going to be, really. I just, I said, well, she can get to art school. She's going to be great. And she can still do art school, okay? But Steve was like, she was getting very frustrated with the whole speech thing and the whole communication. And if you have a child that has trouble with speech and communication, they get angry. And so with Cora, she can be your sweetest child and she can be like a freaking incredible whole nightmare. Um, and so she would have these crazy anger things that I didn't even, and I would try everything to calm it down. You know, I was like, okay, let's do this. And I knew a lot of calming things to do still was not working and so I was with Steve and um, Dr. Steve and we were at the beach actually together and he experienced the bad side of Cora because uh, if you know Cora she's usually great you know she's usually she can play a good act but behind the scenes if she gets frustrated you better watch out it gets really bad um, and so he saw that and he's like you know what you really should look into that narrow feedback thing again and I was like okay I really should I was, and so by the way, guys, neurofeedback is freaking awesome. And not because it helped my child, but because it's helped thousands of kids. And so I was like, well, I'm not even going to market this because I want to check it out really for myself. And anything I do in the office, I love to make sure that it works before I say, hey, we got this and, you know, it works. So I said, I'm going to try it on Cora. Uh, she's going to be my hardest my hardest patient is, is your family, you know, is your hardest patient. So um, I bought the unit, um, and it's very expensive, you know, to spend a lot of money on getting a unit. And I really what I did is I got it, and I took it home, and I just did her. Um, and I just did therapy with her. And the first ten sections, we were noticing some difference. And she's wearing glasses. She gets to watch any movie she wants to. Which, what kid doesn't like that? Um, it's for scary movies, right? So we, we princess and whatever. So she's watching movies. We got the lights on. I'm doing figuring out, and I'm multiple doctors that I'm doing research and talking with, and over the phone. Hey, help me with this. What do you see here? Blah blah blah. So I started working on ten sessions. Notice maybe a little bit of difference. Um, and I was like, well, let's keep going. He he told me right at the beginning she's going to need probably fifty or sixty sessions. And I said, all right, well let's let's do what we can. Ten sessions later got a little bit of improvement but I tell you after the 30 sessions with her even 20 sessions where I feel like we were almost there but like we were getting you could see things were changing in her brain and what I explain neurofeedback is like it's like okay we need to rearrange this room and I'm talking about your brain okay we need to rearrange I don't like the color here the furniture looks a little off so we're gonna start rearranging we're gonna get all the furniture out of so we're rearranging things how the brain is functioning so you'll see things in your kid if you've ever, has anybody done neurofeedback at all? Okay, so you kind of know what it is. So all these changes are kind of happening in your brain. And so she, you would see things like, oh man, she's like, all of a sudden she would never be a crier. She would never cry. She's not, that. she's a child that would be like more like angry and throw things at you rather than sit there and cry about something and be insensitive. So she just started getting really emotional, sensitive. Like she'd cry over nothing. And I'm like, oh, okay, we know something, something weird is kind of going on here, you know? And really after 30, and I've only done 30 sessions with her um, because I feel like right, I mean, I can do more, but I'm like, I'm happy where she's at now. Because we got to 30 sessions and I was like, wow, something freaking connected. And she's like, mom, I can read. Like, it was the craziest thing I can't describe. So I get this letter from the teacher that's been working with her since kindergarten, and now she's in third grade, should be in fourth grade because we held her back a year. And the teacher said, what have, you been, what have you been doing with her? She's like a completely different kid. And I'm like, well, we're doing this neurofeedback thing. And I don't even, you know, I was just like, I don't know what you're seeing in school, but I was seeing things at home. And um, Mrs. Philman, she works in Unionville, and she just could not believe the difference in core. How she went from a, basically like a first grade reader, she's already caught up. Within six weeks, I was like, that's we got something good here, and I want, I want a lot of people to know about it. So what I did is I have a good patient base, and I've had the unit since uh, September, um, or July, or I did my family first, you know. 
And uh, so then I brought, I brought it into the office. I said, let's do some of the ads. I told my patients, because I have a pretty patient base. We see 60, 70 patients here. Um, and I said, I want to give it to them first, um, just because I don't know you guys. I'll get to know you, right? Um, but yeah, so I started working with my patients first. And I said, these I actually looked at my patient list. And I was like, these are the ones that have been struggling the most. And you guys saw some of the testimonials that I knew that they needed extra help with. And I said, well, let's do this on them and see how they go. Every single one that we have done has gotten results. And I'm like, this is awesome. So, um, so what I decided to do is let you guys in on it, you know, so you guys can understand what is neurofeedback. There is a couple of doctors that are doing it here in the area. But how we're doing it differently is we're adding in the upper cervical component because I think that's a really big component on freeing up the brain stem and freeing up the brain. Why? Because that's, I love what I do. 